So this weekend, if you're taking down notes as we dive into week number four of Just Add Water, if you're taking down notes, which I encourage you to, today we're gonna be talking about walking in the favor of God. Walking in the favor of God. All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you that you give us ears to hear you, a mind ready to understand, and most importantly, God, we posture our hearts in a position to receive all that you have for us today. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Y'all, God's favor is a big deal. It's a really big deal. It's right up there with faith, grace, and mercy. The word favor is actually mentioned in the Bible over 70 times. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 26, at the end of every service, the Aaronic benediction is the greatest blessing in the Bible, and we speak it. It's a prophetic declaration over us every service at the end. May the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you, turn his countenance towards you. May he give you peace. It's not just words that we say, and we're gonna unpack this a little bit more as we go on, but in that be gracious to you, it literally is talking about God's favor. Favor is a big deal. And you'll find all throughout the Bible, everyone who was greatly used by God experienced his favor. Last week, we looked at Noah's life and how he was obedient to follow through even in the waiting season between the promise and the provision, he stayed committed to what God had said. And then ultimately, he experienced God's favor. The Bible says in Genesis 6, 8, Noah found favor, say favor, in the eyes of the Lord. We also looked at the life of Moses, him and Joshua's journey in the wilderness, getting people to the promised land. We looked at how he waited between the promise and the provision, yet again, they stayed committed to the assignment that God had, had on his life. Exodus thirty three seventeen says it this way, and the Lord said to Moses, this very thing that you have spoken, I will do. Why? You have found favor. Say favor. favor. In my sight. And I love this last line. There's certain lines of the Bible that just pop off the page. And I know you by name. I need somebody to hear that today. Everybody watching, tuning in, online, across campuses, and he knows you by name. He doesn't know you as damaged goods or fragile. He knows you by name. There's a pastor friend of mine, I've said this before, but I love it. He said, you know, every day when you have repetition of reading the Bible, it's a daily discipline. He said, every day it's like the jack in the box. It's like I open the Bible and turn the page, and it's really good reading. All of a sudden, one day, pop revelation just pops off the page. That's what this verse did for me. You have found favor in my sight. God, let us find favor in your sight, and I know you by name. Come on, say it out loud. Say, he knows me by name. Come on. And we say this all the time in Hope City. He's also just one mention of his name away from being right there. No matter how far you've strayed, no matter how messy you've been, no matter how blemished you feel, he's just one mention of his name away. Just say Jesus. Come on, say his name. See, when you open your heart, and you open your life up to God's wisdom and favor, I'm telling you, everything else is impacted. It's like a domino effect. The Bible says in Psalms 90, verse 17, may the favor of the Lord, our God, rest on us and establish the work of our hands. That's an open-handed posture. God, may your favor rest on us, establishing the work of our hands. So wherever I'm at, Wherever I'm, whatever I'm currently doing, according to your will and the assignment that's on my life, I have the ability to walk in favor. Now, I want to clear, clear up a misconception. Favor does not mean, we're going to put it on the screens, favor does not mean favoritism. It does not mean favoritism. Like, God's not like, I like her hair, I'm going to give her a purse. This guy here, he needs some new shoes, not that guy. Like... No, it does not mean favoritism. We're going to talk about how favor is directly connected to relationship. We have to have an understanding to know that favor is one of God's promises. When we're, this is key, walking in his ways, his will, his word, his righteousness, he loves to pour out his favor on our lives. You know, I was thinking about this morning, I was texting my friend Josh, and we were talking about, he's like, man, I did not see this rain coming. Like, I haven't checked the forecast in a few days. I said, I didn't either. We were swimming yesterday with the kids. And my wife's like, are we gonna swim tomorrow? I was like, absolutely. It hasn't rained here in forever. And I hadn't looked at, at the weather at all because I was not expecting it to rain. Some of y'all aren't expecting favor in your life. You haven't been looking for God to move in areas of your life because of maybe a disconnect. And I'm telling you today to realign your life because there's favor in your path. I love this prophetic declaration 
that we can also receive today. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. This is good. Plans to prosper you, that's good. Not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And since you're taking down notes, because I know you are, write this down. Everyone, this is massive, everyone has access to God's favor. Look at the person next to you and say, even me. Come on, let them know. Look at your second choice and say, even you. Come on. <laughs> Many Christians believe, though, that they somehow have to earn the favor of God. But the truth is, we already have his favor through a relationship. And I'll give you an opportunity at the end of the service. And again, here at Hope City, we don't pray prayers for symbolic reasons. We pray according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. It says, confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. And every time Jesus gets in the way of someone's storm, he rewrites their story. You can be saved, transformed, delivered, rededicate your life today. Then we encourage you to, to take the next step in your public profession. We do baptism twice a month. To take your next step in public, pre, uh, 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 your, your public declaration that this is why I said yes to Jesus and get water baptized. But the truth is, it's all unlocked in relationship. Watch this. Proverbs 8.35 says, For whoever finds me finds life and receives favor. Somebody say favor. favor. Come on, we're going to just keep saying it. Favor from the Lord. Now, some of you are like, ah, I know, Daniel. I feel like I see everybody else with favor. I'm just not that lucky. To someone who maybe has that thought, you don't need luck when you have God's favor. I'm telling you, favor can get you in positions and put you in places that hustling can't ever get you in. When the favor of God is on you, it's undeniable. You'll walk into a room and the atmosphere should change. Come on, somebody. I'm not talking about luck. We're talking about favor. Somebody say favor. Come on. The favor of God belongs to all of us. Psalms 5 verse 12 says, For surely you, O Lord, bless the righteous. Now, the righteous, we're going to unpack this talking about being in right standing. That's relationship. You surround them with a shield of favor. Yes. To be righteous, to be in right standing, like I said, is talking about relationship with the Lord. When you're in relationship, not a religious encounter, that's a waste of time. When you're in relationship with the Lord, it says that he surrounds you with a shield of favor. H how does that happen? How do, you, how do you get in right standing with the Lord? First and foremost, we talk about this every week. I'm going to continue to echo it. If you get tired of it, then let's apply it. Amen. It used to be called the first 15. Now it's the first 20. Five minutes in the word every day. Five minutes in worship every day, even if you can't sing on key. Five minutes in prayer every day. You know, the only way to fail in prayer is to not show up. So pray every day. And then the last one, the, uh, the last five minutes is to simply remember. I talked about that last week. Simply remember all that God has brought you through and brought you out of. And then that 20 minutes will turn into 30. And then 45, and you'll start setting your clock an hour early. Because the hungrier you get for the presence of God, you'll recognize, wow, all these things really are unlocked in my life through relationship. Matthew 6, says it this way, but seek first. Another translation says above all else. Another translation says as your first priority, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Watch this, and all these things. Say all these things. That's peace. That's perseverance, that's fight, that's wisdom, that's clarity, that's joy, that's everything you need when you need it. Yeah. It's unlocked in his presence. Again, to be in right standing is to be in relationship. Here's the truth, though, because that's a lot of pressure. God has never wanted perfection. We'll never live up to that. Nobody is perfect. Now, if you ask my kids, you'll say, there's nobody perfect except Jesus. And then the kids will instantly say, and mom. I'm like, how much do you pay these kids? Like, God's never wanted perfection. He's wanted our heart. And I will continue to echo this every single week, that the closer you get to Jesus, I'm telling you, the more you'll want to live in relationship with him. My friend Tim Ross, some of y'all enjoy Tim Ross who came earlier this year. We need to bring him back. He talked about how it's interesting the way we used to talk about how we used to be. Like maybe some of you are guilty of this. You're like, I'm a Christian. I carry the sword of the spirit every day. I, uh, I listen to Christian music. <laughs> I love Jesus. But boy, you should have seen me back then. Oh, man, I used to pop and lock like the best of them. I could drink. I could just, I mean, I was 
I was all over those clubs, y'all. But now I'm a Christian. I, um, the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, it's the book for me. But man, if you could see the way I used to live. What, and we almost romanticize who we used to be. But I'm telling you, the closer you get to Jesus, if you want to live in my best life, if you want to live your best life, and you want to truly be filled with favor and joy and freedom and peace, you won't want to walk away from who you used to be. You'll want to run as fast as you can to the arms of God and say, I used to be like this, but God. This isn't a legalistic issue. It's the character, integrity, holiness. The closer you get to the heart of God, the more you're like, man, I don't want to live that way. Not like, let me show you where I used to be. I think we're all guilty of that. Stepping on some toes. Here's the truth. Sin is fun for a season, but it'll take you further than you want to go. Keep you longer than you want to stay. Cost you more than you want to spend. All right, I'm done. Some of y'all are looking at me. I'm just stepping on some Jordans right now. So y'all need to wear steel toe boots at the 1030. Amen. Here's the other catch. This is going to be loaded too. God wants to bless and place favor on the real you. That's loaded. He wants to place favor on the real you. He's like, Gabriel, I've been looking for Sarah, but every time I find her, she's got an Instagram filter with blue eyes and freckles. Like, <laughs> God can't bless or place favor on who you pretend to be. He wants to unlock who he created you to be. Genesis 1:27, shaped and molded in the image of God. That's why I love our church, multicultural, multigenerational. That's why we fight for diversity. Because without diversity, we're missing pieces of the image of God. Look around this room, y'all. This is what heaven looks like. Look at Cinco. Look at Woodlands. Look around your house. Amen. The favor of God belongs to the real you. Be who God has called you to be. Because here's the truth. Everyone else is taken. Don't get caught in the comparison trap. Don't get caught up in she's blessed. I wish I was blessed. We'll unpack that a little bit more. When you, again, pursue God and surrender your entire life to him, live open-handed and authentic, I'm telling you, he will continue to release favor over your life. The truth is God saved and rescued us with undeserved grace and mercy. Thank God for his mercy for every mistake, grace for every goof up. But God saved and rescued us because of his favor towards us. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 says, for it is by grace, God's remarkable compassion and favor, say favor, drawing you to Christ that you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life through faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, not your own effort. Thank God. Not your own effort, but it is the undeserved, gracious gift from God. Again, we talked last week about how courageous faith grows when we trust him, even when we can't track him, and how it's all connected to faith. So if you're taking down notes, write this down. God releases his favor through faith. He'll release his favor in your life through faith. But here's the catch. We do have a role to play. I've said this multiple times. Some of you guys have commented about it. We've talked about it. God is not a forcer. He's a filler. So we do have a role to play, and this is key. I want you to write this down. God's favor is often dependent upon our, our obedience. God's favor is often dependent upon our obedience. That's tough. We don't like that in our humanity. So the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 and 6, my son, that's a humanity piece, daughter or son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. That's the obedience piece. For length of days and years of life and peace, they will add to you. Verse three, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you, but bind them around your neck, write them on a tablet of your heart, so you will find favor. Come on, somebody say favor. And good success in the sight of both God and man. Verse five, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. We know this, verse six, and do not lean on your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him. I've asked this question before, but I'm going to ask it again. How many of you guys have ever had access to something that you didn't access? Like you, you realize that later, you're like, I had access to this all along? So I drive, a, I drive a diesel. It's a used truck. You know, a diesel isn't broken in until you get like 200,000 miles on it. And, and there's heated seats, and it's cool, but it's kind of hidden. 
And I didn't realize until my friend Josh was riding with me. He said, uh, I said, what was that noise? I heard a, I said, what's that noise? He said, I have the air conditioned seats on. I said, what? <laughs> I didn't know it had air conditioned seats. Y'all, I had access to something I had never accessed. I turned that on, y'all. I was like sitting in a seat made of York peppermint patty. I was like, hey, it's like the Swiss Alps was just blowing through. Like dentine ice pack just made up into a seat. I had access to something I never accessed. Sometimes we have access to God's favor, access to his peace, access to joy, access to breakthrough that we never Access. I want you to yell it out loud as loud as you can. Say, I have access. Come on, say it out loud. I have access. You got to believe it. Prophetically decree it. You have access through relationship to this type of favor, but sometimes we don't access it. I was raised in a home. My mom and dad are watching right now, Barb and Dave. Give my mom, Barbara. She, I just said Barb. She's going to fight me later for that one. Barbara. Amen. She would always encourage us as kids like, hey, Recognize what God has blessed you with. Wake up with an attitude of gratitude. Don't walk around. How's God ever going to bless you if you're just walking around with a bad attitude all the time? Because gratitude sustains favor and blessings in your life. Gratitude, gratitude sustains favor and blessings in your life. So everybody right now, come on, across all locations, watch let's put a big old smile on your face. Come on, like Pastor Joel Osteen. Just real big. The nicest guy I've ever met, just like this. Come on, gratitude, just smile. Because listen, we, you might have woke up today and be like, it's raining. Come on, kids, we have to go to church. Wear whatever you wore last Sunday. Nobody cares, I think. <laughs> no, or you can wake up and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, I will rejoice and be glad in it. I've survived 100% of my worst days. I'm still standing. God's not done with me yet. The clouds might be rolling in, but I know that his mercies were new Every morning, I'm, audac I'm audacious enough to believe in my faith with that attitude of gratitude that every time I pull into a parking uh, a lot, I'm going to get a good parking spot. Come on, where's all, my, where's all my faith people at? Come on. I believe that somebody's going to say, you want this spot? Like, I'll give it to you. Like, I'm believing when I show up to a restaurant and they need a 30-minute wait, they're like, but not for you. I like the beard. Come on, like, I'm audacious enough to believe that favor is everywhere, but so many times we just don't see it. Or we dismiss it. Yeah. Yeah. We call it a coincidence. What happens if we redirect that with gratitude and say, thank you, Lord, for this one. Thank you, God, for showing up here. Thank you, God, for giving me favor here. Thank you, God, for opening that door here. Thank you, God, for closing that door there. It's good news. That attitude of gratitude changes everything. Some of y'all are looking at me like, okay, you're one of those blab it and grab it preachers. This is just what you believe. Here's the truth. I'd rather live my life with an attitude of gratitude, expecting daily favor, then go through life constantly wondering, I just don't have that much luck. You can choose to believe it. I'm going to choose to believe it. Come on, somebody say out loud, I'm going to choose to believe it. Come on. Why? Because write this down. Favor is also connected to expectation. I expect it. I tell my kids, we expect it. Doesn't mean we get it all the time, but I truly believe through relationship we we'll get a good deal. I truly believe that when I call the hospital and say, hey, we need, uh, we, I need a negotiation on this medical bill, that we're going to find favor. Y'all, it's, it's scriptural. You can pray for favor. Say, God, I expect favor. I choose to believe it. God is graciously wanting to bless us as his kids, but sometimes we're just not prepared because of a lack of expectation to receive his favor. It's not that we don't have the ability or skills to receive it. Sometimes we don't, align, we don't align our lives to grab a hold of his promises. It's going to step on some toes, so get ready. God wants to provide you with increase and maybe a promotion at work, but you refuse to have a budget to manage your current finances right now. God wants to open that door and breathe life into that passion and that dream that he has given you, but you refuse to stop binge-watching Netflix every night. Actually, pray. Okay, I'm going to keep, I'm going, to keep going. God wants to shine favor on your family or your marriage, but you're too distracted by your phone. God's trying to speak to you, but you're too distracted by learning all the TikTok dances. Okay, moving on. <laughs> we have to position ourselves with expectation. Say expectation. To receive what God is trying to pour into our lives. 
I love this, that everything Jesus walked in on this earth, the boldness, the confidence, who he was, both God and man, the same foundation that he walked in, we actually can walk in ourselves. The Bible says in Luke chapter two, verse 52, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor, say favor, with both God and man. Let's tie another verse into it, Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Everything you need is already inside of you. And through relationship, you also get access to the help of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit in John 14, 26 is the help of the helper. So everything you need to walk in who God has called you to walk in is already inside of you. Come on, I believe that. And maybe you're listening and you're like, Pastor Daniel, that's good. Appreciate it. Here's the truth, though. It's not an expectation issue with me. It's a worth issue for me. I don't know that I'm valuable enough. You don't know what I've been through. I don't know that I'm worth very much. The truth is I shouldn't ever have favor because of how I've lived. Watch this, Psalms 145, verse nine. This is for you. The Lord is good to all. That line right there, I could just say, bless the Lord, we'll see you next week, amen. (laughs) Now, the Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. Lamentations chapter three, verse 22 and 23. Y'all, y'all, you know we're going deep if we're in the Lamentations. <laughs> because of the Lord's great love, this is huge. We are not consumed. Man, thank God for his grace. Yeah. For his compassion never fails. Yeah. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Come on, every day, his compassion and faithfulness never fails. It's never failing and it's new every morning. So is the supernatural favor of God in your life. Come on, God's mercy and grace is so much bigger than your past and those broken places. How many of y'all believe that? I believe that. Psalms 84 verse 11 says, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor, say favor, and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Uprightly, again, like I said earlier, doesn't mean perfection. It's a posture and a decision to grow and get better every day, to be people of character and integrity and obedience towards the things of God. But again, maybe you've struggled with value and that word that I talked about. Maybe you've had a misconception in your head that you don't deserve this type a favor. I'm going to explain it this way. I want my boy to come here to come up here real quick. Can you come up here real quick? Come here. Uh, give it up for my boy. Come you, there's steps, but you can do that. That was amazing. Like a G.I. Joe doll. All right. Uh, give it up for Kamu. He actually plays for the Houston Texans. This is my buddy. We're going to have a banner season. I'm telling you, it's going to be huge. It's going to be amazing. All right. So when we're talking about value and worth, so uh, I was thinking about this before we, uh, so I've got, I've got a couple Got a couple options here for you. I've got this crisp, ooh, George Washington, amen. It's crisp, it's clean, it's a $1 bill. But I also have this kind of raggedy, bent up, just kind of pulled it out from the, it was in my wife's purse. I dug it out of the bottom of her purse. And I was like, what is this? She, she was keeping it from me. Well, I had this crisp $1, or I have this beat up, like, oh, sorry, uh, oh. I got it right here. It's a different, it's a different one. It's actually, it says something else when it says 50, $50, but it's been places, smell, oof, smells rough. Uh, it's raggedy. It's had a past. It's been beat up. This one here has only uh, watched Kirk Cameron films. Uh, it's just only knows about left behind and pulls into the parking lot with mercy culture and casting crowns playing this one. This one's had a past. Amen. This one here has had a past. This one right here. So which I'm going to give you two options. Which one do you want to choose? Just automatically. He didn't even think about it. He took the 50. Here's the key. No matter how beat up, no matter how wrinkled up, no matter how messed up, no matter how damaged the value and the worth has already been placed on it. God will take those broken pieces and say, hey, I can shift the narrative and I can place favor on you. I'm going to give that to you, but I need it back because I have another service. Amen. (laughs) One afterwards. And you play in the NFL. I need that back. Okay, moving on. (laughs) Amen. Here's another one. (laughs) Write this down. (laughs) 
<laughs> he already gave it away. All right. <laughs> Favor is also, this is huge. Favor is connected to your confession. Y'all, yeah. we got to watch what we say. Yeah. I don't know. My family's always been broke. I've always been broke. I don't know. It just seems like everybody else is blessed, not me. Everybody seems to get ahead, not me. I'm always three steps behind. Y'all, we have to guard our gates. We have to watch our words. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, so you don't think it's my opinion, words kill, eesh, words give life. They're either poison or fruit. Then the last line, you choose. Y'all, we can choose. Favor can actually be blocked. You can't stop God's favor on your life, but you can block it. And you can block it with your words. So favor is directly connected to your blessing. I want to, I want to give you, I'm going to give you a challenge. I said this last week, change your thinking, change your words, change your life. Over the next 90 days, I want you to change your thinking. I want you to change your confession and watch how God begins to change things in your life. If you're taking down notes, you can write this down. I need to start thinking twice and speaking once. Favor is directly connected to your confession. I walk in the favor of God. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm blessed coming in and going out. Everything I put my hand to prospers. I'm not behind. I'm actually ahead. I'm not trying to catch the will of God. I'm in the middle of God's will. Come on. It's okay to prophesy. it. That's what Job 22, 28 says. I'll decree a thing and it will be established. I write this one down. This is huge. Don't quit before you see the favor of God. It's difficult in our... Humanity, I'm telling you, there's this massive pull to constantly say, I don't know if that's for me. Don't quit before you see the favor of God. Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not grow weary in well-doing. For in due time, I love that. For in due time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. It's a choice. Can you wait? Is the waiting season a wasted season? My wife last two weeks ago talked about the watering, the weeding, and the waiting season. We allow God to water, and then we have to weed, y'all. We have to get in there and pull out the things that are trying to restrict and choke off and smother out the good fruit in our life. And then there's the waiting season. I love that song by Maverick City. Wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord, he will renew your strength. So wait, I say, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord, he will renew your strength. So wait, I say, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 in the Amplified says, those that wait, look for, expect, and hope in him will gain new strength. In the waiting season, he'll actually give you brand new strength. How many of y'all need some new strength? So wait on the Lord. Don't quit before you see the favor of God. Because here's the truth. We've heard it said before. Favor isn't fair, or the old school way to say it is favor ain't fair. And typically it's like, I know, bro, I got a good parking spot. Favor ain't fair. But what do we do when God favors or gives someone favor? How do we respond? We have to be very careful in our humanity when we see someone else experiencing favor to not get envious and jealous over the favor that they're receiving because you have no idea the seeds that they've sown. They may be walking in their harvest season now because of seeds they sowed two, three, four years ago. I believe that we have to start being more of a church because we already do this well, but as a group, I believe we have to start celebrating others that are experiencing the favor of God. Come on, call me crazy, but I love seeing other people win. I love seeing other people win. Your circle should celebrate with you, not be jealous of you. I love seeing other people win. And if you don't have somebody cheering you on and celebrating with you, come by me. I'll celebrate with you. Because the truth is, God wants to unlock this supernatural favor in our lives. But watch this. Sometimes the favor that he gives us isn't for us. Sometimes it's this open-handed posture. So this is the last one. Write it down. When you receive favor, pass it on. When you receive favor, pass it on. Years ago, Oprah did this thing, this pass it on challenge, and some lady at a Starbucks in like Indiana bought somebody behind their drink, and they were like, oh, thank you so much. I'll buy the car behind me. It went for hours. It was like six hours, hundreds of cars. I don't know who the last guy was that was like, no, I'm not going to buy anybody else. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I read about this on the news. I'm going to be the one that stops it. <laughs> like, 
When you receive the favor of God, when you live an open-handed life, sometimes God will say, hey, 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 because every farmer gets to keep a little seed himself. But when you live, live open-handed, God will say, hey, I want to bless you so that you can bless others. I, I want to give you favor. I want to give you a dream. I want you to start a business so that you can employ some people. I, I want to set you up to win so that you can help other people win. Listen, never feel bad about letting somebody, listen, never feel bad about celebrating somebody else's victories because sometimes it brings them back to center. It brings them back to wholeness that makes them remember, wow, God does see me. Celebrate with others, but when you receive favor, pass it on. We find favor when we favor others. I was on a flight, and I just preached to this conference, and I got the update on my phone, like, ooh, I got my upgrade. Upgrade, like, I was excited. So I went up to the thing, and they were like, Mr. Groves, you got the first class upgrade. I was like, oh, thank you. I can drink coffee out of a glass cup, and I have to talk to the peasants in the back. That's what I called them. I'm sorry, guys. I was, I was one of them 30 seconds before, and now I'm upgraded. So I, I got nestled in, and no joke, I literally leaned over to close my eyes, and I felt this nudge from the Holy Spirit. I opened my eyes, and there's this serviceman walking in in his full fatigues, and I said, hey, thank you for serving our country. He said, I appreciate it. I said, thank you. Appreciate it. He walked by. I said, praise God. 15 feet behind me, the Lord said, give him your seat. I said, that's a familiar spirit. I, I know the voice of God, the voice of a strange voice I do not hear. And I, I just kept, I couldn't get away from it. So I was like, boom, flight attendant came around and said, Mr. Graves, you need a little refresher on your coffee? I was like, no, actually, where did that, where did that gentleman, the, the, the gentleman in the army, he's, she said, oh, he's towards the back. I said, what seat is he in? She said, oh, he's all the way in the back. I said, is he near the lavatory? Because I'm just testing the spirits here, you know what I mean? And she said, oh, yes, he's literally next to, he's in the middle seat. I said, this is getting better. This is definitely not the Lord. Amen. And I said, ah, okay, hey, I want to, I want to, I want to bless him. I receive favor. I want to pass it on. She said, why? I said, because I feel like I'm supposed to. So she said, okay. So she goes and gets him. He walks up and he, he's bewildered. He's like, why are you doing this? I said, it's okay. All, <laughs> all the seats are the same. It's no different. They got a curtain up here, and you're going to drink out of ceramic cups and stuff. But just have a seat. You, you mean get your blanket? And so I go all the way in the back. Y'all, we're next to the lavatory. I'm stuck between two people that would not give me arm, rest, support. I was just like this. I was like, praise God. And so afterwards, <laughs> I walk off the plane, and he's standing there. And he's real polite. He said, why did you do that? I said, man, I just got my upgrade. It felt like I wanted to bless you. And he said, man. I'll be honest, I've never flown first class before. That was unbelievable. He said, but what he didn't know is I was having a full-on panic attack back there because I was stuck between two people. I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I was just sweating. Like, heart rate was still at 140. <laughs> like, I'm, like, yeah, and he goes, I I'm really nervous. And he pulls out a sheet of paper. He said, uh, man, being up here just felt so much peace. He said, I'm, I'm going to talk to my girlfriend's dad to ask for his hand, for her hand in marriage. And I'm, I'm so excited, but I was so nervous. And man, you blessed me with this seat. And I was able to sit up here. And so thank you. Thank you so much. Y'all, when we receive favor, God will bless us and give us more favor when we bless others. Come on. I'm telling you, it is Bible. If you expect to receive favor, then you should also place an expectation upon yourself to offer others favor that you yourself haven't earned. That's why we live an open-handed life as a church. That's why here at Hope City we serve. That's why we're a generous church. That's why we have outreach and missions projects happening all the time. Y'all, we have Days of Hope coming up July 10th through the 16th. If you've never served before, get through Growth Track, jump on the Dream Team. I'm telling you, thousands of us are going to be in our city across all other churches are going to be partnering with all of us, and we're going to be serving our city. But we're a church that lives open handed. That's why we're a church that's spirit filled. That's why we're a church that believes in tithing and radical generosity. That's why we give over and above to reach our city, the nation, and continue to reach into the globe. That's why we have a house party in Uganda that's watching right now. Can we make some noise? Hundreds are gathered in Uganda. So we're reaching our neighborhoods, but we're also reaching the nations. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, my wife and I committed years ago when we first got married we said, even when we are in a tight spot, sometimes the misconception with tithing or giving is we can't afford to, and our posture was we can't afford not to. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10, honor the Lord with your wealth 
and with the first fruits of all your crops or your income. Then your barns will be abundantly filled and your vats will overflow with new wine. We have some friends here at Hope City. They may be in the room. Our friends Alex and Desiree, and he came to me about a year and a half, two years ago. He said, I mean, we were just kind of in a bind personally and also in our business. Just, it just felt like we could never get over the hump. We had two or three people like kind of on our waiting list. He's a doctor of chiropractic. He's a brilliant chiropractor. And he said, man, I told my wife, I feel like things are out of order. We're not disciplined. We're disciplined in working out. We're disciplined in how we eat. But we need to be disciplined in our giving. We need to start tithing. He said, let's just try it. He said, after tithing, everything changed. After we committed to that 10% of everything and we decided to sow into Hope City, he said, everything changed. I went from three or four people to a three or four month waiting list. He said, I learned about stewardship. I learned what generosity really looked like. And we started walking in abundance because we can call Hope City home. And we know that what you guys are doing with the resources of being good stewards of romancing people to Jesus, we are confident in sowing here into this house. Because he said, here's the truth. We've received favor, so we want to continue to bless others. Where your treasure is, the Bible says in Matthew 6, verse 21, your gifting, your time, your resources, to really reach others, your heart should be connected also. Matthew 6, 21 says, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. We've got a couple more stories of life change that I believe are going to encourage you. Check this out. We were newly married. Uh, we were going to a church and they were teaching on tithing. Looked at what our numbers were in my head and I was uh, thought, giving about 5%, we can, we can probably get that to 10%. Having the confidence to test it and go, okay, we'll give it a go, see what happens. We then had to go home, work out our numbers and we decided that with a bit of sacrifice, we could do it. Our, our story really begins in August of 2017, Hurricane Harvey. And literally, woke up one morning, go about our business. By the end of that day, our house is flooded and we've never, we've never been back to that house. When everything was so hard and things were tight here and tight at home, and so you <clears throat> said, honey, we need a tithe. At that time, we just both kind of came to each other and we just started going to Hope City. And we thought, you know, maybe we need to like tithe consistently. In the bank, we had enough money to either pay our rent or to tithe. We said, we've made a commitment to God, we're gonna do this. So we chose to give our tithe. Half an hour later, I get a phone call from my boss uh, at that company when I was temping and, and she said, no, we'd like you to come in. And that was three weeks worth of work. Uh, and that was just enough to cover our rent. And a good friend of ours, me, he'd say the words, you can't outgive God. I'm like, what does that mean? But every time we've made that step of faith, and, and we started at a time when we couldn't afford to do it. We lost everything. We started tithing when we were students, and now our tithe is more than our income was at that point. The outworking as an individual is the opportunity to grow your own faith. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity right then we all ask, okay, I want to have more faith, want to have more faith. Okay, here you go. We didn't wait to see how our year turned out. This is what we feel like we should do. And then God multiplied that and blessed that. Since that time, our business has quadrupled. How could you possibly outgive life itself? Not only has it come from him, but all of it is his to do with as he pleases. And therefore we do trust that for those other costs that are gonna come down the list, the provision is there like it was with Steve's job. It's trusting God, it's having faith when you don't know and you can't see. When you see someone getting baptized, when you see someone um, raise their hand, you own that. That's part of what you've sowed into. 90% with God's blessing is more than 100% on your own. That's so good. Come on, give it up for some of our family. Love the Colsons, love the Hennessys. I remember my wife and I, we just made that commitment during the seed time and harvest moments. We made the commitment to continue to reach into the broken places. There's so many people that are hurting, not only in our city, but all around the nation, but specifically, our heart for our city. I said it a moment ago, you, we set the pace, we do, 
to continue to expand the kingdom, to continue to do damage to the kingdom of darkness, overpopulate heaven. I went to a restaurant. I've told this story before. I went to a restaurant this last week. I went back to that same restaurant I told you guys before that was a secret. And all of the locals were like, still don't you dare tell anybody about this because they wanted to stay They wanted to stay small. They didn't want anybody to know about it. That's the opposite of our church. That's the opposite of the gospel. We want to tell people about Jesus. We want to overpopulate heaven, which is impossible, but we want to romance people to the heart of the living God. And maybe those stories of life change connected with you. And I love earlier, I talked about the famous blessing, the most famous blessing in the Bible, found in number 624. May the Lord bless you. It says, may he keep you. Again, the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you, turn his face towards you and give you peace. Twice in this verse, we see the word face that his face would shine on you, that his face would turn towards you. If God turns towards you, then favor has been activated in your life. If you have the body language of God himself saying, I see you, I know her, I know him. When my kids call out my name, there can be hundreds of other kids, but when my Daphne or my Fox or my Finley or my Brecken calls my name in a crowded room, I know their voice. God turns towards you, when he turns his body language towards you, favor is activated in your life. The word turn and the word face actually have the same Hebrew word, root pana, it is, and it's literally to face someone. It's to literally turn your countenance in their direction. We teach our kids all the time, like it drives us crazy as parents, like just look at me in the eyes. Come on, look at me, look at me in the eye. How do you know when somebody's look, listening to you? Look at them in the eyes. You guys have the face the heart of God towards you. The Bible says in Psalm 61, verse 67, verse one and two, I love this verse. May God be gracious to us. That means show favor to us. Bless us, make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth and your salvation among all nations. The word gracious, again, actually means to grant favor. Will you stand your feet? Close your eyes for just a moment. God, thank you for this incredible group of amazing individuals, God. Again, multi-generational, multicultural across all of our locations. You have abundantly been a blessing to your church. God, we live open-handed. We want you to put favor and place favor on the real us. Psalms 30 verse 5, with every eye closed just for a moment, it says that his favor lasts a lifetime. You can count on the Lord to give you favor in every season. If everything is going well right now, thank just position your heart with a heart of gratitude for that season of tangible blessings, but don't feel entitled to it. Because again, we know we didn't earn it. It's without God, it's impossible. But if favor seems hard to find right now, don't give up because favor is never bound by circumstances. God can track you down and bless you in every season. So God, right now with our hands lifted, open-handed, God, we ask for your favor. Breathe life on every mom, every dad, every son, every daughter, every individual, every single person, every widow, every widower, every grandma, grandpa, every person at the sound of my voice across every location or watching online. God, we ask open-handedly, God, for you to remove weed, pull out anything in our lives that's robbing us of the opportunity of favor. And God, right now, we commit our we commit our hearts and our lives right now, God, that as we receive that favor, to continue to be good stewards of it and to pass it on. God, give us opportunities and moments, God, to serve. Our time, our talent, our treasure, God, we position our hearts and we get our yes out of the way. And we ask God for you to continue to build your church through our lives. God, I pray and I thank you for every person that's listening, every person, God, that your heart for them, God, has been stirring in them today. If you're right here, right now, and you're listening, you say, Daniel, here's the truth. I don't have favor because I don't know Jesus. The truth is favor is directly connected to one person and his name is Jesus. You can put your hands down for just a moment. I want you to hear me. If you're here today, if you're watching online, if you're watching the replay, if you're at Cinco Woodlands, Tanzania, a watch party or at West Houston, you say, Daniel, the truth is today's the day I wanna give my life to Jesus. I said it earlier and I want you to hear me again. We don't pray prayers for symbolic reasons. We pray because according to the word of God, when we confess with our mouth, Romans 10, verse nine and 10, believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, everything will shift. 
everything will change. He's already written victory in your story. Or maybe you're here and you say, Daniel, I've given my life to Jesus, but I've fallen away. I got caught up in the prodigal life. <laughs> I've been living pretty messed up, been living pretty reckless, but today's the day I wanna rededicate my life with every eye closed just for a moment. I want you to hear me. He sees you. He loves you. It's not by chance or accident you're here today or watching online. One, I wanna give my life to Jesus. When I hit three, if that's you across all of our campuses, I want you to boldly lift your hand. Two, I wanna rededicate my life. Three, if that's you, lift up your hand. I'm looking all over the room. I see hand, 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 hand. I see you back there all the way in the back, my friend. Over here, all the way back there. I see you guys over here. Let's go. Come on, Hope City. Hands are going up all over the room. I see you. I see you. Come on. Come on. We can make more noise than that. A bunch of people just said you're talking about me today across every location. All right, here's what I want you to do. You have a next step. We're going to pray as a church family. Our whole team, everybody watching, if you're watching online, say yes to Jesus. Our team will help you. Say this out loud. Jesus, today's my day where everything changes because you see me. I repent for every sin, all my struggles, all my past issues. I repent and I ask for your forgiveness so that you can wipe my slate clean. From today on, I choose to live for you. I confess you as my Father, my Savior, and my Lord. In Jesus' name, come on somebody, say amen. Let's go.